but the idea of the uh, kitten nuggets part of yeah. the YouTube channel is to interview interesting and creative people in any part of the industry, both music and film. And okay. as, as you're my, well, kid, kiddo is, um, as I've your first mentioned a few times, um, is my first yeah. film. Uh, you're my first actor or, or part of a group of, of actor firsts. Um, okay. So I obviously, well, not obviously, but I I kind of met them in passing, but not not as first hand as we we got. Um, You've never had one under contract before. I've never had a nest of them. No, um, nest of actors. That's a very good description. <laughs> well, and then and also because I mean everything was new to me, so everything was as it was as equally as as it was exciting. It was also pretty terrifying because I didn't know what you guys would be like. And, I know. Yeah, well, um, amazing so I, shapes and sizes as well. Yeah, so I'd obviously I seen out there. Oh yeah, I'd seen your show reels, right? And um, met you all briefly for the read through. Yeah. Um, that, that's not that's no real substitute for going to the green room for the first time and seeing you all. So it was and it was pretty. Yeah, you know, I was pretty but, nervous. I've got to be honest yeah. about about meeting you all to see what what you were like. Um, and How to become across. Well, that was the the really nice surprise. Really, was that you were all just I don't like the word ordinary people, but you were nice ordinary people. You didn't, you know, you didn't have I mean ludicrous demands, or you were weird or Little ponies that needed. Yeah, know, where's my pony? <laughs> where's my pony? <laughs> yeah, there was none of that. Um, you were just nice, nice people that were excited about working on the project. So that was that was a nice. Yeah. Surprise. Well, I, I, I don't, I don't want to do us down, but you, you can get that kind of person. They do exist out there. Yeah, yeah, I can. But I, I think can. It, it, the same with all walks, walks of life. You, you've got your stereotype, and then you've got the fact that not everything is about stereotypes, and then, um, hmm. and then there's what you get. Yeah. Um, I mean, I did, I did. Obviously, the green room is you're all just sat around having coffees and stuff. So it was just saying hi and everything else. And you all seemed very warm and welcoming. And that was great. And But then when you got on to say and you did your, you know, you did your craft, it was it was really it was really exciting and inspiring to see you all in action, really. And how patient you are, how, you know, take 20, take 30, whatever it was sometimes, you know, how many times you went through that. That that plastic sheeting to look terrifying at those poor that poor line of of children, um, did it every single time and trying different things and um, I think I think the big one for me was when when Lauren was repeatedly dropping onto the floor, <laughs> yeah. um, and and not only was she willing to do it over and over again, but she'd spring back up with loads of energy and um and with a smile on her face and i think that's you know maybe something people don't see you know the side of actors is i mean i i know everybody i think i think film is probably maybe more well documented than maybe the the music process in you know yeah. people being on set and having to repeatedly you know go through their lines and be directed um but to see it in uh, in the flesh was was really insightful um, okay and obviously, we talked a lot about film and everything else when we were, we were sat around waiting. Yes. There's a lot of waiting as well, which there is. I mean, the, 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 just going back, the, the, the thing about repetition of, of stuff, that, that is the job. And um, what you want, ideally speaking, unless you've got a weird um, head on you on that particular day, is you want the film to be good. Yeah, yeah. You you want You want to do well for everyone concerned and it's one of the most collaborative things i've ever been involved in right there are so many different departments all doing their thing working together to try and come up with ultimately this yeah. this one thing yeah and if any one department kind of drops the ball that's what you'll kind of notice on on the finished product mm -hmm. so i keep getting notifications and all sorts of things i keep swiping <laughs> them off that's fine um I can cut that out. It's cool. Although I, I do, I, I watch quite a few um, different, uh, in like podcasts like like this, and and I like the ones where they that's that kind of stuff happens. Anyway, it's fine. Well, it, I don't it's really part like of it. it. I make it one big long stream, really, of just just two people having a natter, really. Yeah. 
No, I, I, I like things fit <laughs> like it's two actual real people. There is no script. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, how how did you how did you find? Um, I mean, you've alluded to it to it to a certain extent, but how did you find working on? Well, what was your initial? What was your initial thoughts when you saw the the script for the first time? Script, I loved it. Um, I could I could kind of visualize a version of it in my head. Mm. Um, and the concept was was nice and easy, and I didn't know quite what was going to happen at the end. And um, there was that initial "what's going on here," and then it kind of developed into um, into proper horror. Mm. Um, and I kind of immediately started getting different vibes of different horrors that I like, and thinking, "Yeah, this definitely uh, floats my boat." I've never done a high love horror mm. um, genre in films um i like i like it i like a well i mean the thing is horror is is very um it either works or it doesn't it's kind of like comedy in that way right you you're either genuinely on the edge of your seat and scared or or it's not working for you and mm. that's that, that's a lovely easy tell because if, if a horror is not working for me off we go <laughs> similar with the comedy if i don't find it funny within the first 10 yeah. minutes or so. it's probably Wait, not gonna work fine. yeah my sense of humor it's not my sense of scare or whatever um, but this one I read and was definitely like, oh, yeah, this seems nasty and psychological and dystopian and all these other tick boxes that I went, yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. Um, and it wasn't in your face and obvious. It was more psychological and it was splatter. Um, so, yeah, no, I, I liked it. It was kind of, was kind of high concept mm. uh, horror film, which is quite rare. Did you find when you were reading it that were, there were specific films that were springing to mind when you were reading it? Uh, yep, Texas Chainsaw was one of them. Uh, one of them was a short story by Roald Dahl. Oh, okay. Um, from one of his things. I, I'm not sure if they turned it into a Tales of the Unexpected. I think they did most of them. But this this was, um, what was it called? I think it might even be called Pig. Um, but anyway, it, it, it's about a young boy who's raised by his grandmother, who's a vegetarian, and he doesn't know anything about meat as a, even as a concept. Uh, he becomes this fantastic vegetarian chef, and then his grandmother's getting to the age where she's about to die. When she dies, he's kind of given all this money and told to go off into the city and become this chef. So she's he's got this letter saying he's an amazing chef, and please give this boy a, a, a job. <laughs> Yeah, 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 and um, and yeah. You know, spoiler alert: he he goes into a, a restaurant and buys a hot dog and go. Oh, what is this amazing substance? I've never cooked with this kind of thing before. And then it takes a kind of weird turn as some uh, Rob Dahl something, like and he's kind of told to come through to this place and stand in line with this group of other kind of vulnerable people. Is the only way I can describe it. Like, right. This woman with elegant long gloves on and two children and a worried looking mother. And essentially, they get kind of put into an abattoir. Oh, okay. And the next thing he knows, some chaps put a, a noose around his feet, and he's growing up. And uh, then he has his throat cut, and <laughs> presumably, oh really? hot dog meat. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it does a real kind of zig then a zag, and it left me thinking, what the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I can I can well imagine. I mean, that's not a million miles away from where where we head. Well, exactly, um, and that, yeah. that was that was the thing of oh, the, these humans. Oh, I, oh, 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 okay, right, right. We're, we're there, right. We're doing with this and this, it, and it, you know, and the fact that I can remember all of those things and not even remember the the title of it. I think that's the power of a really good story. Um, story. Yeah, it, it's sticking power. Well, I didn't know. Um... Perhaps naively that that Roald Dahl went went those kind of places. To be fair, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll try and find it for you and, and mm. send you the book. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. And and any other any other ones? Because I, I mean, with definitely with the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, I think I think that was it was a similar sort of journey, really, where it's it's clearly there's something up relatively. Yeah. One of the lads gets onto the onto the minibus doesn't he and he cuts a couple of people and and they're all freaking out but you don't really know where it's heading right no 
I mean, the, somebody gets dragged in. Yeah, you kind of get these like subliminals of the um, right at the beginning with the the light bulbs and the mm. the flash photography, and then you there's there's an awful lot of focus on the barbecue meat when they stop in service stations and things like that. Just yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Of course, yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. So um, yeah, there's an awful lot of kind of suspense to it, and then people can't forget that. Mm. The, the bits the bits people tend to to talk about are, are all the the jump scare stuff, mm. but there's there's such a ground bed of of tension building before it all kicks in, which just you're already immersed in this uneasy, uncomfortable, um, tense, stressful atmosphere before before it even kicks off, and then the 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 kind of the one by one element. Of them all going into the house and not coming back. Yeah, yeah. And that, that 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 has its kind of own horror. Please stay together. Why? Yeah, yeah. Goodness, please, please, please. <laughs> oh, hate it. Um, and yeah, the the initial. Uh, is it the first time Leatherface appears? Is is when the door goes shunk. That and it's the shunk that did it for me. I it, think they, it's, they, they, he appears. I mean, it, it's such a rapid succession of shocking things. He appears, and your brain's going, "What the fuck is that?" Oh, it's a who? Who? What's yeah, yeah. he got in his face? Before you even get a chance to start scramble through that, he's he's well. No, that's right. He trips and falls first, doesn't he? Yeah, and, he, and then he drags drags that girl into the. He, he trips down and then shunk. Yeah. The 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 axe goes into the head, and then there's a horrible bit, bit where he he kind of lies still and then he spasms, mm. and you see the feet kicking. You know, mm. in effect doing nothing of it um trying to run away from the floor mm. uh which is you know in others which could have been comedic but i found com you know just like oh oh fucking hell <laughs> my fucking god this is real <laughs> i've never even considered that what would happen before that's what would happen and fucking hell we've yeah, gone yeah. into brain <laughs> um and then grabs hold of him yanks him through door shunk it's the door and 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 you know as quickly as it's happened, it's disappeared, and yeah. you're just left in a state of shock. Yeah, yeah, it's really so, powerful. And, yeah, and, and, and also <laughs> that, I think that, the, that's the moment in in horror history. I think where I go, well, shit, everything is different now. Yeah, yeah, no, um, and same for me. I, I kind of felt that the same way with with that with the coming through the curtain. Mm. In, mm. in you know, it was that. That appearance and you know, grab, boom, gone. Right. So you'd got that in your mind as a as a source of inspiration then. Totally. Yeah. Oh, amazing, amazing. Um, I I I think the shunk for me was was, um, you know, when you watch films, when it's not just kind of gratuitous making you jump. I just thought mm. that was just a, a a great bit of of editing, really. Um, yeah. So I think. When we spoke collectively, as you know, Brett, myself, Jordan, and um, and Lewis in the initial stages, I think we, I think Brett and I said Texas Chainsaw Massacre in kind of unison, really, as to as a source of of inspiration. I'd have loved yeah. to see that. Like yeah, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we love that We're film. Fucking sick now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah which, which was nice. It was it was it was good to have that. Um, that kind of being on so so quickly on the same page, really, and we, and and certainly with the with the look and feel and grittiness and the three by you know three four kind of ratio. Yeah, I'm the other thing is when sorry, there was a kind of a seventies yeah. deal with being mirrored in the in the grading of the the film. Yeah, for sure. Um, and the overall tone, and yeah, that's lovely. There's kind of a nostalgic thing. I mean, um, the Hammer Horror kind of range of looks. Just, just before before anything's actually happened, you know, if you didn't have the titles up, you can pretty quickly go, yeah, I think I know what this is. Yeah, because we're like we're like days within just sort of being the same age, aren't we? So we would have been the yeah, same yeah. age when we were watching um, uh, the Hammer Horrors as as kids, and you were allowed to watch those, were you? Because I, I I kind of and my parents were, I, I was didn't really before. know what it was. I was the last of four, so and uh, the television room we had was down the other end of the house, right? Quite, quite big house. So if I was down there watching television, I was pretty I much left. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, which for 
child's active imagination meant I had some pretty sleepless nights. Yeah, for but, sure. You know, after a while, that you kind of um, you kind of realise that it's, it's it's all in your head, pretty much. Um, so yeah, I, I had those as as, as um, the, and there was one stage where we were all sat down. Said I can't have, can't have been more than kind of six or seven or something like that. And I remember Alien was on the telly. Oh wow! This was like in the, the main family room. There, there was like a big television up up. We had it up on a, a on a shelf, so we all sat there looking up. Which <laughs> good, good for the next. And you know, I was going kind of oh, okay, right, was interesting, quite scary, and 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 my parents were so engrossed in the fact in the story that they forgot that I was there. Yeah, yeah. And I think it was only when the the the, the chest bur- the chest burst had happened, and they were kind of going, oh my god, that's, that's, wow, <laughs> that, that, that my, kind of- my tiny mind had been blown. And it was that point my sister, my older sister, no sister, <laughs> sat there with Jesus Creek and kind of not go, Are you sure you should still be here? Oh, yes, darling. Um, off, off the bed, off the bed, off the bed. Yeah. <laughs> you know, which I think was worse in a way, because then I had that running through my head. I didn't know how it ended. So my mind. My, my, yeah, my, my, that had quite a lot, big impact on me as well, because I just, I mean, despite the fact he's on the ground and something on the on that table and, he, and something yeah. trying to get out, I did not expect an alien to pop out. It was. I don't think. Any, well, I think famously the cast weren't even expecting. Oh really? It. I didn't know that. Wow. But yeah, I don't know if it's, it's mythology. But I, um, I think the the idea was that, that they kept that as a, as a surprise of not necessarily that it's going to happen, yeah, but how it was going to happen. Um, and you know the, the practical effect was going to happen there and then. So I, I think the look of shock as that blood spray hits all their faces, they kind of all stood round. That's genuine, as in that. What the fuck? Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and that that that's something I was talking to um, one of the people from the from the um, the crew actually on yeah on Friday, and we were saying about. When Brett was talking in the Q and A about how a set can be, you know, uh, run by a, a tyrant director, uh, yeah, you know, stamping around and 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 uh, terrifying everybody and making them all feel deeply, deeply uncomfortable and, and unhappy, or you inspire them um, and you're and you're tactful in your your feedback and and you and everybody's on this on the same page. And um, the person I was talking to said, well, you know. Do you know what happened on the the the, the set of uh, Exorcist, which I think you oh, and I talked about a little bit as well? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I Where they were, was, you know, absolutely. letting off guns and but he was, he was and... make people shot. The worst one was um, uh, what's it called? Uh, is it Ellen Burstyn who plays the mother? Right. Yeah. Yeah. She like nearly broke her back, didn't she? At one point. Well, yeah. I mean, yes. they they have a an effect whereby they they can pull you back, and yeah. they do stunts where they'll punch you and then everybody holds on a cable and you fly backwards. Yeah. I think they did that. And he told her, it's okay, we won't do it hard. We'll just put you back. And then went round to the stunt guy and said, pull as hard as you fucking can. Hmm. And you see the shot because it's in the film, which is where Regan smacks her and she yeah. flies back to the wall. And you can see she's, she's banging her head against the wall and looking shocked and in pain. Because she fucking is, right? Which uh, you know. Well, as an actor, how do you how how do you feel about about that kind of an approach? Because it obviously works. I I, I, I don't work curious. Yeah. Frankly, um, there's no fucking excuse for that. Mm. That's that's that is um, that's abuse. Yeah. 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 Pretty bottom line. Yeah. You. You wouldn't get away with that in pretty much any other fucking profession. I can catch doing that shit in school. Well, yeah, you know. but I suppose at the same time you are actors, so you should be able to, you know, act surprised. <laughs> That's the kind of key. But yeah, there's this kind of rampant ego director going. Right? No, you haven't got it quite right yet. I'll tell you what, do it again this time, and uh, and okay, just do it again, and then lets a gun off behind your head. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder. What I wonder what the 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 difference would be between the two different approaches from a shot perspective, and whether it actually justify. I, I know it doesn't justify itself as you've alluded to, but whether the the 
if they were to see the two shots, one where they're prepared for it, but they're acting, and the other one where they're genuinely terrified, what, how much of a difference that actually made? I think we have enough examples of people acting scared and it being good enough for us to get that effect. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, 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 I mean, there are all kinds of things. I mean, there, there's the opening of Jaws, where famously uh, the girl swimming around in the water, uh, being pulled around by the shark, was actually being pulled around by two teams of men on ropes, pulling her right. one way. Um, and then whatever the harness was that was protecting her broke, and she was actually being pulled by directly by the rope, which was kind of breaking her ribs. So when she's saying "stop it, it hurts," that's what we're hearing. Wow! Right. Uh, is it more powerful because it was real and she wasn't acting? I don't necessarily think so. It certainly is genuine. That's upsetting. Well, this I, the... I, I actually find myself lifted slightly out of that bit now watching it because I know. Yeah. And I'm not in the story um, listening, you know, to somebody acting. Um, I'm thinking, shit, that's somebody actually in pay. Poor, poor right. actress. And I'm no longer thinking about, you know, yeah. the character. Right. So I, th I think, no, I think what, once it, once it's been once the cat's out the bag and people people know that it's uh, genuine pain. And again, with The Shining, another great example is kind of the Kubrick um, harrowing of Shelley Duvall, um, who basically take after take after take after take kind of just, uh, allegedly alienating her making her feel yeah essentially trying to put her physically into the same headspace as her character would have been so that by the time you get to take 95 of the same shot of her looking terrified and freaking out and, and where have you gone toby Oh. Okay. No, we're trying to do it. You're back. You're back. Oh, we're back. There we go. Sorry, you, <laughs> Sorry. I was thinking you're, you're taking this thought very seriously. <laughs> <laughs> um. Right. Okay. We're back. I don't know what happened there. Sorry. Uh, that was me. It, it, it dropped. The, the connection dropped. Sorry, yeah, so you were saying about um, Stanley Kubrick. Oh, you've gone now. Oh, oh this, is, this is great. Oh, there we go. You're back. You're back. Yeah. You're back. yeah, I think we're good. I think we're good. Yeah, so you were saying about um, Stanley Kubrick wearing her, wearing her out. Wearing her, her, her down. And again, I, I find myself watching that scene and thinking, poor Shelley Duvall, rather, than, um, uh, rather than the character. But there's, isn't there, you know, from an outsider uh, in in film as such, but mm. knowing the, knowing these kind of stories, um, there's there's often usually in you know very successful but small budget, low budget independents where they've gone. I've just used ordinary people. None of these people are actors, and look how amazing they are. Um, I mean, what what do you think? Because I think if you then want genuine terror, and I'm, I'm not advocating <laughs> terrifying people, by the way, but I'm just interested about, you know, what, what works and what doesn't work and why people do what they do. Because it could just be an ego trip just because, you know, you're Stanley Kubrick um, in some respects. But, you know, what do you think the, yeah. the appeal of... You can justify it whichever, whichever way you like. But at the end of the day, you are, you are effectively abusing somebody... Yeah whatever your motivation for it is to create this great work of art do you think there's do you think there's is, is that actually a justification for no, putting no. someone through, through physical misery and psychological torture i i personally think that's that's horseshit i think you need to work with an actor to get them to that place it's yeah okay it might be effective but then so is good acting yeah yeah, yeah. You know, um, and so what, which films are you alluding to with the um, the low budget? Not, and oh, again, I think, um, what, what, what is a real actor? The, the, yeah. the, the one that, oh. um, anything like sort of like by Harmony Kareen, maybe like we were talking about Gummo. I think they none yeah. of them were actors. I think Harmony um, is does like to use 
um, muggles rather than rather than actors. I think uh, City of Gold. Interesting, interesting term. That, that means I'm a wizard, does it? <laughs> yes. Yes. That's, that's, I'm a um, yeah. I think City of Gold, um, that Brazilian film, they all the cast there were. I might be really wrong on this, but that's that's the one that first sprang to mind. I think, I think the kids, maybe not. I think you're right. No, I think it was the kids in City of Gold that were just kids off the street. Yeah, I mean, again, kid actors, that there is this thing. Um, and that's usually instinctive at that age, mm. I think. Um, kids, you get out of stage school a lot, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Tap dancing the way to set. Yeah. Yeah. Um, sometimes that's fine and, and it works again it's also of course it's a good director will cast well mm. and, and won't quit until they find the person who's right for what they want to do because you know as we said before if there's any element in a film that's weak then that's what gets the attention rather than all the yeah. other goods every other department can do their job fantastically but if you've got like a weak child actor who just yeah. can't do what they need to do to leave that's all you're going to notice in a scene. Um, and it's a, it's, a, it's a pet peeve of mine um, in films is is when you get a bad child actor, because we know there are good ones out there, some fan mm. fucking ones. And, you know, when they're around, people should make full use of the fact that, shit, we've got a good one here. Yeah. Because um, yeah. they do seem to be in the minority a lot of the time. Um, but they're there and keep looking and don't kind of compromise in the sense that, ah, it's all right, it's just kid actors, people will forgive it. So no. when when did you start acting? What 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 point did you decide you wanted to be an actor? Yeah, well, I, I think <laughs> that's a notable difference. Everybody's acting every day of their lives, most okay. of the time. I, th I think as kids, that's probably the one time when you're probably less likely to be acting. Right. But even then, there are things that we do that are acts, that are kind of ways of behaving, that are, are, are things you put on to yourself. Um and when did, uh, yes yeah, so, and so i decided that i wanted to be an actor i think when i was about 17 okay I, I was basically midway through a levels i'd done biology physics chemistry and maths because i thought i wanted to be a doctor at that stage mm -hmm. uh, much my parents delight and then yeah. like, one year in realizing i hated these subjects yeah. and, i can well imagine uh, it, the thought of another seven years of just just staring at books and and you know getting the chemistry right for the pharmaceutical side of things and mm. oh god no that that just wasn't it wasn't me mm. it wasn't what I wanted to do and I thought I'm, I, if I continue down this road I'm going to wind up in in something that I really don't enjoy yeah and you know the, the, there are all these people who tell you make sure you do what you love for a living and then you'll yeah, never yeah. work life with yeah again yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's still work <laughs> when you're like 800 and fucking whatever, and you're going, Okay, here comes the energy again. But <laughs> it is work, I don't care what you say, I'm enjoying it, but it's still work. Yeah, um, it's, it's taken a force of will. Um, but uh, I, I then was doing um, I was doing school productions. Because up until the age of 16, I was at an all-boys all Catholic school. Okay. Um, and <laughs> and that, that's, that's his own brand of fun there. Whilst I was there, I, I fell in with the theatre department pretty much by accident. Right. Um, they were doing auditions for people to come and work, work backstage. Um, and I think somebody came up to him and said, do you want, do you want to come and try? Because obviously, I think nobody had turned up, and they said, "Just go on." So the, the, the existing people said, "Do you want to come try?" So, yeah, all right, <laughs> nothing yeah. better to right Kick, kicking yeah. around the the courtyard or whatever it was, and then uh, went in, and I knew how to wire a plug, and um, I I didn't, I wasn't being obnoxious or right. cocky or whatever, and they thought, "Perfect, he's he, he's our guy." So I kind of got drafted in there and then was set to work doing all sorts of weird and wonderful things. And it was kind of, there was a kind of mundanity to the stuff that I was given. Mm. My, my job was paint a sign. Again, I made, I made a prop sign for the yeah. production island. And then the next thing I was making um, tiles for a roof by Papier Mache. 
a, a set of radiators that had a weird kind of tile yeah. shape in them uh, to a certain thickness and then turning the radiators on, radiators on and then peeling them off again and then cutting them into tiles. And just extraordinary complicated set that the, I think it's Father Justin and Mrs. Warwick, God, yeah, name's still embedded in there, just had these fantastic okay. sets. <laughs> So I, I made every single roof tile for this. This um, I think it was a Shakespeare play. Um, I think uh, to represent a Greek house. I think it was uh, Midsummer Night's Dream. Um, but yeah, <laughs> so that, that was the first job, which sounds really dull. But because I was in a group, yeah, yeah. This camaraderie, this teamwork again, which was really attractive to me. Where we were all working together to make this thing, and despite the fact that I all I'd done was make these um, fucking roof tiles, painted them, and, yeah. and you know they bum, 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 properly tiled roof, uh, which looked amazing, as did the rest of the set because everybody else had pitched in with their bits. Yeah, um, and, th and there was that kind of yeah part of the team. I was sudden, suddenly I felt included. I, I had an idea that had a tribe within the school that I never really felt part of. Um, and that that was lovely, and I think that started something in the sense that, that there's something here that I really like, and I and I love the theatricality. I'd always loved films, I'd always loved television. I was happiest planted in front of the television, going, yeah. my dad complaining, oh idiot box, goggle box, get peel your eyes away, square eyes, all of those kinds yeah. of things. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then then suddenly there was this this thing that that, that um, I loved, and then. With the whole doctor thing afterwards, I went to the local six one college in the end. Um, after a year of that, it was like, ah, oh, I can't do this. And mm. I think I think it was reflected in the fact that my grades weren't that great. Right. Um, so it was like, right, what do we do? Mm. And what I really want to do is this. So my parents' initial delight, of, yeah, he's gonna be a doctor. I was like, oh, he wants to be an actor. Um, but I was uh, the fourth child so by that stage it was like yeah whatever you <laughs> we've got all our stress and worries out on the other um but that's what you want to do you probably learned by then that actually what they say doesn't have a lot of effect if you do it anyway. <laughs> so by the fourth we were like whatever we say you're going to do what you want anyway i don't know that, that's certainly how uh, I, I, I have to ask them when i see them this weekend uh, yeah. what, what, why did you agree to this <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, so anyway, I then did music, art, and theatre studies, mm. which was a bit of a switch. Um, but uh, the the thing I loved most was the theatre studies because we got to put on plays, we got to create plays, and this was like really feeding the creative side. And also at that time, video had just kind of come to the local village stores. Oh wow. Because, you know, the, the, the videotapes and things had been around for a while and recording your own stuff off the telly, that, that had yeah. been around. And then suddenly, um, renting videotape. You must remember this. Cause yeah, I do. <laughs> I, I, remember the, I, I remember seeing it was in Litchfield and it was a little tiny, little tiny shop and they had um, VHS on one side and Betamax on the other. Oh, yes. Those were the days. And, and I think, <laughs> I don't know which, which my dad opted for, but... Um, I remember just scrutinizing the covers because they were they were so creative. Yeah, and and particularly I, the well, I don't know. I was going to say the one that re I just couldn't stop staring at was Hills of Eyes. Yeah, because just I'm, fucking the, I, I think by I, it. artwork on the front of horror films from from that era was just designed to make you go, "What the hell is that?" I must, mm. I must look at the. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, they, sure. they were pretty much the most creative things on there, the, the most oh. um, uh, kind of capturing. Um, so, because I, I remember there was like the, the big video store in, in town. My, my local town was Darlington, but they had like this kind of um, equivalent of Blockbuster before Blockbuster existed, but they had like wall to wall. Yeah, that, was, that was a few years later, wasn't it? Yeah, and I could spend hours. I, I, I do that now with Netflix. And, and and other uh, streaming channels um, and you know I, I think oh I've got time to watch a film but I'll spend the entire time just looking at <laughs> films that are no, available that's, that's the one. thing isn't it really is that a great cover doesn't necessarily mean it's a great film 
And no. I, think, I think part of the part of the journey that's that's nowadays a little lost. I think, you know, going to a music shop and looking at the album covers and going to a video shop and looking at all of the the, the, the film covers was an mm. experience in itself and an, a build-up of anticipation, a bit of a commitment maybe to get out, get off your arse and yeah. go somewhere and look. Um, but I remember being really, really excited about probably more than music, actually. I remember yeah. going to video shops and being really, really excited to see what was out now. Yeah. Um, and if there wasn't anything I particularly liked, then I'd go into the weird arty section and pull out Enigmar Bergman or something and be really excited about what I was about to see. Um, right. I remember with with CDs, there was a there was a shop because I went to an art college in um, Birmingham and there was this tiny little music shop and I'd found. I was going. Th I was being inspired by certain artists and then just eating up all of their work um, and yeah. not being able to afford to buy it all or click on it all in one hit on on a streaming platform as we can now um, mm. and things like. Um, you had to, you had to do some legend. Yeah, to I always loved the Beatles, but then I, re I I I started to read up on them more and found out that John Lennon was doing some really cool shit with Plastic Ono Band. Um, but obviously, I couldn't just click on Amazon and get it the next day. I had to go to a shop, find his bit, then pull it out. It, one it copy. Was. There was one copy of Plastic Ono Band as it was second hand, and being really yeah. really excited about getting. And then I'd have to drive home, bang in the machine, and then listen to it. So there was a there was a bit of a. And I think there's there's certainly something, and I don't want to sound like an old curmudgeon, but I think it's so easy to just click on something and go, no, don't like that. Click on it, something, no, I don't like that. Whereas yeah. it's just all that legwork in. I mean, while it, he's going to listen to it. Watch stuff. You would watch stuff that no, nowadays you, you, you'd instantly. I think so. Yeah, I do. I do just wonder because about that. The amount of effort it took to get that tape back to your to, back yeah. to the place where you watch it mm. for that, you know, for the telly to be free or whatever. Um, you know, it, it, there was a lot riding on your choice, so you you, you did spend a lot of time deliberating. And do you uh, do you find because I have like a, a sadness that I don't get as excited about seeing things as I did back then when I was I'd started that first journey into music and 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 film really, or is I, that I I, I, I don't know I, 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 I do get excited or, I I know what you mean but but then at the time it it was. A, new, a brand new toy box was being opened because I suppose the argument would be was you know before video existed um you'd have to wait for the the film to come on telly yeah which yeah. I can kind of remember the cinema yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah the, cinema. The, the excitement of getting the radio times for Christmas and mm. going through with with my pen and underlining all the films that yeah. I, I but I would never fucking see but I wanted to see. Mm. Uh, because invariably I'd be off doing other things, but you know, there was at least in the back of my mind, oh, that's on, so maybe I'll get to see that this time. And you know, I may, I may as well have just underlined every single one of them because at, yeah. <laughs> at that stage it wasn't, I wasn't that big. Yeah, they would be good I, anyway. Watch, watch anything just for the experience of watching a film. Um, so yeah, I miss, I, I think there's that element of nostalgia, there is that element of, of the newness of the whole thing. Uh, Netflix was a bit of a, a initially there was kind of like oh my god I can watch whatever I like whatever I want and it's all here and I don't have to get a video in and it's all just ten pounds whatever a month and it's probably more now um, and yeah that lasted for a bit until you realise oh, okay there is a limit to what they have in here mm. and I've already kind of touched the sides um, and also. The, the the kind of effort the discipline of of finding something that you want to see rather than here's your selection choose from this lot rather than going right here's everything I've still got a massive DVD collection so I do um, draw from that when I when I know I want to see something good if I want to see something new I'll go to Netflix usually um, but even then I get film magazines and and I prefer looking at something and going yeah that's what I want to see. And going out and getting that, and again, it, it's like all technology. It is how you use it. Everything's open to abuse if you watch too much of anything. If 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 your life's out of balance and you're just doing this thing too much, then there, here there be dragons. Mm. So you're, if if you're doing too much of that, it means you're probably ignoring other aspects of your life that do need attention. If you're going to be 
a whole human being, really. So yeah, um, yeah, I, 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 I haven't lost my love of film. Yeah. No, I, I haven't either. I'm still I, getting plenty. I just miss the, like, I miss the excitement of seeing something, and 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 having a buzz from watching it as much as I used to. And I think yeah, I think that's just getting old as well. Well, that that's yeah that that's kind of where I'm I'm coming from really is that is it because I'm just getting old or is it because the John well, that, or the Ingmar Bergman of this world world aren't around have anymore? To decide for yourself, huh? That's something you are going to have to decide for yourself. Well, yeah, but I, 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 I do question whether it's because the John Lennons of this world and the Ingmar Bergmans of this world aren't around anymore. I, no, I, I, younger I think, versions, I think, of course, but. Um, but then, but then that's the thing is, is where they where they innovated. That's no longer on the table for innovation. I think that I think there's a kind of um, a, a law of diminishing returns. The better, right? We're we're just looking for the new. Mm. A lot of the time, I, I find that frustrating. I I don't like, um, you know, marveling at something just because nobody else has done it before. That's not necessarily a seal of quality. Well done, you found something that's original. Mm. But what does it what does it make you feel? What is the joy within it, it or whatever it is that it's trying to invoke in you, other than novelty? Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. I'm I'm very motivated by how make things make you feel. Yeah, and, and I think that's usually my measure of success with a, with a film. Uh, well, well, most storytelling is if you are as the director and the producer want people to feel a certain way and come out thinking a certain thing or, or or whatever it is that your intention is your measure of success is how many people come away from watching your thing feeling it that mm. I, I i'm i'm usually suspicious of people who go well people will take whatever they want from it and you know i i, I don't care what people think my work is done yeah yeah well, exactly. well done you've created this <laughs> mysterious bubble that people come away from going uh -huh. yeah well, that was my intention was for people to have their own reaction. Bullshit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I think that too. I don't care what people think. I'm just doing this thing because I feel like doing it, which feels really just self indulgent. Mm. Well, I, I think that do not the, care about your audience. I think the job of of an artist is to create something that evokes something in your soul. At the end of the day. And and I think I think art is one of the few things that can actually achieve that. I think, yeah. although ga although gaming, which I know you're massively into, yeah, as as almost there's been moments in games that I've played where I've felt the same way as I felt when I first heard my first album or, for, or saw my first film. So I think, yeah. I think I think gaming has got a lot of mileage on that front. The more experiential. Well, G gaming uh, is 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 storytelling now yeah yeah um that that that's where it, it, it's come to it, it's reached we reached the point where it's it's another medium for telling story um and and that you know that that's something that's been around obviously since time immemorial mm, hello, yeah back to Gilgamesh um so yeah it's it's another welcome as far as I'm concerned another welcome medium for for communicating all sorts of different things so that, that's what we get from stories as far as I can see it, it is things that make you ponder uh your own life mm. even if it's a case of I'm so glad that's not happening to me <laughs> yeah I, oh, I think I think I think that's kind of what why I like horror because a lot of the time, you 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 take the thrill ride, and oh, oh my god, oh, 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 and then at the end of it, you kind of switch it all off and go, "Thank fuck, that's not me." <laughs> <laughs> now I go about my life. Happy. <laughs> not, <laughs> I haven't just been strapped to a chair and tortured. So, just zipping back to to your your early days, what? And sorry if this is a, a very predictable question, but what what was the first film you, that you saw that really rocked you on your heels and blew your socks off? First one that blew me up. Well, the first one I saw at the cinema uh, was Bambi. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. So that, that has 
with, with, with to it. In the blood every day as, as a short before before the feature. Yeah. Back in back in those ages. That's, um so yeah, have, having having done the Winnie the Pooh thing, which was all kind of hey, yeah. whimsical, then bam, mum's dead. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Which was a bit of a okay, here's death, kids. Let's contemplate that for a while. Uh, okay, and and again, I, I think being in a cinema for the first time that in itself is 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 a bit of an experience because it's like this portal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everything goes dark, and you know, it's kind of like you're you're in this massive. You've never probably never been in a room quite that massive before. Mm. Uh, that's um, suddenly lights off. Okay, yeah. that's that in self news, and then suddenly the lights you know, up the front and you're hypnotized by that and Pearl and Dean kicks off, which, you know, for your tiny mind, it's slightly mind blowing. So funky. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. It's like, I, 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 I'm, I'm feeling things I've never felt before. <laughs> <laughs> overwhelming your senses with, with all this stuff. And then King Cone by this shit, by Buttercus, by all this yeah. stuff. Go, yes, I will. I want to. <laughs> I've never wanted Kiora more. Um, <laughs> with your very dubious advertising methods. Um, and oh, and that, you know, before anything had really started. So already you you kind of, you, I, I've not seen this before quite like this. I've seen adverts on television, but not like this. Yeah. Um, and then and then kind of the next thing, and then the curtains move, and you're going, why do the curtains move? Um, and how are they moving by themselves? This is amazing. And mum, you got mum there. She says again, yeah, we're still okay. We're, we're good. We're good. <laughs> I think it's very important not to not to dump the kids in a cinema for the first time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Been, I'm, I'll, be I'll, I'll see you. Yeah, you can go for a fag. Yeah, I'll see you in two. <laughs> I think that 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 trauma would play with that somewhere. Um, and then. And then yes, I, I I do remember that moment of of bang, and knowing instantly because because obviously you don't see Nom die, mm. you just hear the bang, and the next thing you see is Bambi bursting out of a bush, going, <gasps> "I think yeah. we got away from the mother, mm. mother, mm. mother, mother." Yeah, and and silence. Yeah. As, as it, there's the silence, and then then Bambi's dad rocks up and goes, "Come with me now." And it's like, "Oh fuck, okay, <laughs> come with me if you want to live." So yeah, having gone from kind of the lines of Psycho, you go straight into Terminator, uh, uh, yeah. mother, mother, <laughs> to, to come with me if you want to live, essentially, and boom, off they go, and 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 you're just left as a kid going, mm. "Why did you bring me here?" <laughs> what? <laughs> Grabbing hold of mother, you know. <laughs> what? what? How you old would for? you have been? Can you remember? Sorry? How old would you have been when you saw that? Oh. That I don't know. I'm very bad with kind of ages before kind of I think ten. Right. It was dead. I mu I must have been I think about five or something, like very, very young. Yeah. Because it was it was that first kind of treat. Uh, oh, you're old enough now. Bambi's on, and, it, and Disney's are absolutely fuckers for this, especially with the early stuff. That they, they they deal some pretty major mm. uh, major cards. I mean, Snow White has some pretty yeah, dark and uh, Pinocchio as well. Pinocchio, well. fantastically done. Got the whole bit where they go into um where they turn into donkeys. Yeah, yeah, it's wild. And the, the whale, the fucking yeah, whale, yeah, Monster yeah, yeah. whale. That that's some heavy stuff, I and mean, you know that that's horror stuff, really. Because mm -hmm. um, that that's that's transformation horror, really, wasn't it? They, them being turned into donkeys, mm. and you know, before bath, you're a you're a frog, or pow, you're you're this, and it was all kind of jolly. This was a real kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. Of that body horror stuff. Mm. Um, so yeah, it's a wonder. <laughs> but but on, on on the other hand, I I kind of think that that's, that was the point of fairy tales. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Hansel and Gretel. If you think about the time, the time they were written in, they were essentially cautionary tales. Kids, um, it, <laughs> it's it's not it's not all bells. And most kids probably weren't having all bells and whistles at that stage. Mm. 
but even so if you if you if you you had somebody who's reading you a bedtime story you're probably in a good place but the story itself was, was essentially don't go into the woods yeah. by yourself yeah <laughs> and do do what you're supposed to gingerbread houses yeah yeah, you you'll get eaten or whatever. Um, I think so. Yeah, that it, it's interesting you mention Bambi and the and the shock of the shot and all that sort of stuff because that's you know that's in kiddo that's ostensibly what what happens there really is the yeah. they think they've escaped and they're laughing and and they're happy. Yeah, and it's, it's a bit, a bit more space as well. Yeah, okay. yeah. Instead um, of mother, it's daughter. The first film I I saw was in Rugeley in um, a little cinema house there yeah. where it was it was really old and they got um they'd got double seats at the back where the couples could sit and snog which is pretty yeah. cool, the big red curtains and stuff but the first one i saw was star wars oh in, right yeah. in, in 79 yeah um, and i mean that blew me away i mean incredible filmmaking anyway but i i have five fell asleep <laughs> i think about um three quarters of the way through because it was just i think i was just too overwhelmed by uh yeah, when, when you put the overload. Yeah, yeah. I didn't you know what was going on because I, you know, I mean, I think was it you? Somebody said, you know, what a crap name Star Wars is. If you if you sit, yeah. no, I was talking to Chris about it about um, Oasis, the band name, and how yeah, it, well, the first it, time it, I heard that, it was like, what a shit name. But actually, it then after a while because it's associated with that. I mean, you kind of accept it. But yeah, I mean, the Star Wars. I, I always remember hearing that Star Wars. Mm. Just sound well, crap, didn't it? And there was no real sci-fi, I don't think, other than the stuff that was on the telly, like Thunderbirds, maybe, or um, Space 1999, which we'd have been watching as well, wouldn't we? Yeah. Um, on yeah. Saturday in Chips and all that kind of stuff. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, the, the, yes, the, Star Wars is a big one. It was a big one for me. I yeah, that, that, that's, well. that's, good, that's a good first experience. But but uh, by that token, every every film that you see after that's going to be a little more disappointing uh, it wasn't as good the, as only, star wars. the only film that that blew my mind after that because there was a lot of copycat yeah. star wars films wasn't there um which i know have got kind of big followings well, like, it's followings. disney tried the black hole i don't know if you remember like, so i was gonna say like the black hole that's exactly where i was going but then i saw blade runner and oh, okay. and that was that was star wars with great acting in it and and real tension and drama and beauty, yeah. beautifully shot. But wait, wait, I remember seeing that on on a on a small telly. Um, mm. I didn't see it at the oh, cinema. Oh, I did too. I didn't see it in the cinema. I saw it on um, DVD, I think. Yeah. I'm obsessed with it and watched it. That's the only film, or one of the only films that I've repeatedly watched. And I, when I was at, uh, at college in Birmingham, I watched that almost every week. I think I became that was your go to. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I just thought it was a perfect film. Um I I like I, I love a lot about Blade Runner. I think the only thing I find about it, uh, apart from the the weird um tell me you like me seduction technique. Um yeah. <laughs> which still feels a bit weird, especially with the saxophone solo that kicks in. Yeah, that, yeah, true. But that's slightly problematic. Um uh it's uh it, it's quite it's quite slow to get going once it gets going yeah, I, I, yeah. but 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 there is but i, th I think the, the, the first few times i saw it i didn't care i was just this is these effects are just amazing this city exists how the fuck have you done and this was kind of 80s stuff mm -hmm. and the, the van Gallis score is just adding to the whole trippiness yeah. of the whole thing and yeah i do remember kind of just appreciating this is next level stuff mm -hmm. I, I, I am in the city of the future and it, there's nothing I'm looking at here that seems shonky or wobbly or out of place. It just is. And it's still, it's still mimicked to this day. Yeah, God, yeah. It's, um, it's in in gaming, as, as a go-to in gaming and in... Well, Cyberpunk. Yeah, yeah exactly. In that case, that was, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you're basically in Blade Runner. You can't wait for it now. It's, <laughs> it's kind of almost become uh, the trope for sci-fi. Uh, taking over from Star Wars, um, it's that dirty futuristic thing because there was there was either kind of the future's going to be shiny and lovely and and yeah. everything, Disney, think everything. Yeah. the the Disney style, um, or 
here, here was something that was like, this is the future. We can tell that it's the future, but at the same time, it's dirty and grungy. And I think that's what kind of grounds it. Mm. You, you kind of can imagine yourself in it because it's actually, yeah, it's still, still a, it's likely to still, be like in the future. Yeah. But with this high tech veneer on top of it, um, which I like. I mean, that's my preferred take on, on a side yeah. is, is that we still count the sun and we're still here. I still relate. I think it's it's definitely harder to um, portray what uh, a writer or a, a director's vision of the future is going to be if it is in in daylight and it's not raining. I think it's it's very easy to make it believable <laughs> if it because it, you know if the environment goes the way it's predicted to go, it probably will well, yeah. be raining and it'll. Well, I, I, you have yeah. to make. I, I think as a writer, you've got to make some pretty bold choices about about what you're saying about the future what what why have you gone in the future to do your story whatever it may be um and and part of that is your idea of where you think we're heading where what we're doing now leads so yeah it does feel a little hokey if everything's being solved and you know the environment's fine and all of these other things and we're not everything's still, perfect yeah we're not still perfect ones. yeah so yeah I'm really, I'm really drawn to sci-fi though i i think at some point i've got a an idea i won't bore you with it now but i do have an idea for a story please do that that's based in well yeah, yeah you told me that story about i won't give it away but the yeah the um yeah, yeah. the dual shock aliens one yeah yeah i i do find i do I am really because you know we've we've not got much longevity us uh, you two us two well, you two us two especially you know we're we're half hopefully halfway through um, yeah. and yeah. if we're lucky um, or unlucky depending well, on yeah. what we end up like but yeah. what the future will look like and I think I mean we see we, I don't know we I think we're seeing more of a transformation in attitudes with the youth now than i've ever seen on who am i what am i um how should how should i be uh, um addressed um and there seems to be big broad uh changes that are taking place that because i um, and what i what i mean by that is i have this this kind of romantic idea that we'll still be like you and me will be on a zoom um yeah. but you'll be on you know the red planet and i'll be on you know in a in a imploding earth kind of thing but we'll still be having the same daft conversations about do you remember what it was like seeing hills of eyes on a on a, on a betamax or something um and i like that idea i like the idea of just no ordinary folk just in a completely different time um and then perhaps yeah, what, I mean, but the, the, looks is, like. and the mundanity of it as well because i don't think it would yeah. be it, it probably will be for the elite potentially because you know you only have to see that in real life now but you know what I, I had this this thought when I was walking because I used to do a lot of work where I'd go and I'd stay away a lot. And so I'd be in like crummy hotels all over the country. And I'd and especially when you do the uh, kind of the shining hallway, uh, hotel hallway kind of thing and you're trundling along and it's just it's per it's just perfectly symmetrical and and I think what if what if I just look to my right and there's a there's you know there's a window and you can just see earth from there. But everything mm. else is the same. You know, you go into your room and it's still got a hairdryer in the in the in the drawer and and an ironing board hung up and but you're just on a different planet. And that that really, really intrigues me as to what sort of story you could write about just these ordinary people. But also I think, I don't know whether I've got the brain power for it, but what what society will be like too. I might give that job to somebody else to figure that one out or be able to predict what that'll be like. Because it'd be so easy to say, well, there's going to be the super elite and then everybody else is going to be, you know, competing, you know, with uh with drones, uh with with cyborgs or whatever else, um, and what that'll be like. But yeah, I think sci-fi is freaking fascinating. Uh, and especially if in the right hands combine, if yeah in the right hands. And especially if you could combine that into a a game that you could be inside. Um, and you could, you know, a little bit like the old books where you'd go right. If if you do this, go to page nine. Your own yeah, all that kind of stuff. I think that I think that'd be, I think that would be well, next. Funny you should say that, but that's one of, one of the projects on my list is exactly that. Is a choose your own adventure book. Oh, cool! Really? Have you have you yeah. made? Are, are you in are you halfway through it, or you you made? Uh, well, we've we've got the concept. Um, oh wow! Amazing. It's, it's kind of a horror, not 
necessarily for kids but with kids kind of inspired by the um the whole stranger things thing okay and this was based on a story my writing partner stuart dodd who lives down in canterbury shout out to stuart um he he had this childhood experience of uh he he grew up on a farm farmer's son um and well, i need to talk to him <laughs> hmm? i need to talk to him then oh okay yes i can i can make that happen uh yeah you you two get on very well um he uh he he and a group of three other kids it's kind of like the famous five and stuff yeah his, his first his first pitch to me was right where i grew up the farm was next to military land and already i was going like okay that's interesting and he said our idea of fun was going and finding um flashbangs mm. that uh, the kind of army exercise grunts would occasionally drop um, and like finding an intact flashbang was like the, the holy grail and they'd find and spent cartridges and all kinds of different things um, and flares and you know <laughs> yeah. this kind of treasure trove anyway they were doing this thing and obviously they'd watch helicopters fly across and occasionally there'd be a tank in the distance and stuff like that it was all very exciting oh. And then they found a house, you know, as you do, they, they, they kind of went exploring and rambled. And there was a house and they they went past it a lot until they realized nobody was there. There was no sign of a car, no sign of people being there. So they got a bit bolder and they ended up, anyway, long story short, they ended up finding a way into the house and um, kind of played house essentially with a real house. Um, and they were doing this for ages, and that was the most exciting thing. And every day they'd get up, and, and you know he'd rush his breakfast down, and say, "I'm going to play with <coughs> my three friends," and uh, they'd bolt out, take the dog with them, you know, real famous five stuff, uh, and go and, and and play in the house, and you know had a telly and it had everything in the kitchen. Oh wow! You know, it, it was a, it was a full house, but nobody was there for whatever reason. And it was obviously a, um, um, a residence for people who, when they came to this place to visit, that's where they went. Um, but eventually, people turned up and they hid. And um, that was, he said, that was one of the most nerve-wracking moments of life. Yeah. Some, somebody kind of was saying, somebody's been in here. And it's like, Ugh! you know, they're, they're all in cupboards or whatever. Um, and and they went around, oh, the, the, but they're not here now, kind of thing. And anyway, they locked the door <sighs> that they'd got in. Um, so, <laughs> and anyway, they left. Long story short, um, and they all all got out of there, and and um, and anyway, it, it, word got back. Anyway, that that wasn't the point. But just as a premise of this house where people would go in and, and that excitement I, I could that that was so mm. believable and the whole setup and the whole thing of it um and we said okay well what if the person who owned the house was not just people who owned it what if, what if there was a sinister side to it we said what if they found things that as kids you wouldn't know what you were looking at within the right. house right uh, you didn't frankly care it was just a bit weird what, what's this all about why is this room all separate this is odd but not thinking and also in that position you're doing something naughty so you're not going to tell anyone right um and what then happens if one person gets caught as it mm. were what do you do then mm. um that's, that's, that's really vivid I, I like that a lot so yeah, so so the, the, there was all of that, and anyway, we thought, how do we want to do this? And we thought, well, initially, we need to work within our budget because we don't have one to make it into a film. <laughs> but um, we all uh, we, we wanted to set it in the in the kind of eighties because that's when we grew up, um, and what was around in the eighties, and we came up with choose your own adventure, yeah, fighting stuff, and thought that would be a really good way of introducing a horror film plot yeah 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 uh, so yeah that's that's kind of as far as we, we've got the plot 
we've got the idea of, of using the book format. We just need to do the next bit. And the other thing we wanted to do with it was, can you remember text-based adventure games? Yep. Go East. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I do. Go. Very well, yeah. Yeah. So we thought that, that, that would make a, a, a nice retro mm. uh, introduction to the whole thing. And then if people like it, then then look to take it to the next level, whatever that may be, a script for a TV or for a film. And is your is your friend an actor too? Uh, yeah, um, he's, his, his main area of expertise is editing. Okay. Uh, filmmaking, I suppose. Um, but he was uh, the first person to set up a video games based course for Sixth Form. Oh, wow. In the, they, he helped pioneer that. Um, so yeah his, his background really is in in stories as well and before that he was at art college with um the brother of a, a friend of mine who was at drama school so that was our weird link but when we met each other and started talking there was a connection on films and tv and just generally pop culture that we both mm-hmm. both loved and we both wanted to make a film and um you know, the thing I was thinking was if you if you don't um, sorry to interrupt you but just because I'll forget no. it, is um, if if there isn't the budget to make uh, a film as such you could could you do it as like a like a radio play or something so you could just yeah I mean this is a great thing with story you, you, you you've got your story idea and you can pick at any medium and and make it mm. work in that medium so yeah you can do it as a radio play mm. I, I, it doesn't make it really radio plays that. anymore but because there's Radio Four that does 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 drama. Yeah, that's, that's what I was about, thinking. Yeah. Oh about. yeah. So yeah, everything else is is um, audio books, I suppose. Is the, well, yeah, that's true. Yeah, but then yeah. you have to write. It's funny, isn't it? Really, you can procrastinate for years and years and years, and you think, "Why am I procrastinating so much? What is it? What's the core of it?" And it's because I didn't think I had a particularly strong, as strong an idea as I, I felt I had with Kiddo. Because as soon as I got it, I thought, "Right, I need to talk to a filmmaker." And I'd been, t- you know, waffling on to anybody that would listen about wanting to make a film for as long as I can remember. Yeah. Uh, so. Um, so you find made the transition. Yeah. I mean, th- this is the other thing is you will find people who will talk endlessly about the, the great film they're going to make, mm. and that's all they ever do. You yeah. know, they, it's like they talk to people hoping that that person is going to go. I like the cut of your jib. I'm going to fund your idea. Here, yeah. have a. How much do you need? Yeah. 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 Um, how often does that happen? I would I would assume seldom, if ever. Yeah, and I think I because because I'm as old as I am, like yourself. I've been in so many situations with people where they they don't um, come up with the goods or get yeah. bored with the process, or they they're all very excited about the initial idea, but they they, they it fails. They the power to see it through. Yeah, yeah. And, and Jordan was different. Jordan was very much like. Yeah, I think there's something here, and then he gradually warmed up, and then the acceleration started to happen, and it became this thing where we then got like fifty people in a in a, a warehouse. In a warehouse. Uh, so he, so he, yeah, he wasn't like, "This is amazing, let's do it now," and here's the budget, and off we pop. It took it took quite a, a long time, really. Which is yeah, the, that, which is right. the thing that separates the the the, the sheep from the goats is um is exactly that is you do realize that the process of getting this thing actually fucking made and this is why i i have if you have made a film i don't care if it's shit or not mm-hmm. just the fact that you've brought this thing into being is defying all sorts of odds mm, yeah no i you do a, a huge amount of effort of willpower more than anything else i, I can't remember somebody said that that all creation is is essentially a a force of will. Mm. So if you've willed the film into existence, so painting's one thing, that's you, the canvas, off you go, go nuts. Mm. That is yeah, great. And if, it, if it's, I, I've got a lot of time for that. But to get a film, to get everybody together, to be, a, you look at credits and just the amount of names. Yeah, that, even on our show. Like, somebody's got to get all of these yeah. people together um, and, and pay for it and find the money from people. And uh, make sure that every department's behaving itself and is happy or, or is at least doing what they're supposed to be doing. Um, that is extraordinary. Yeah, um, I, feel, I feel I feel like we've we've climbed a hell of a mountain to get there, and I've I've enjoyed this. Yeah, I mean, this, this is the short, right out, but it is if you, I mean, I've, there's there's countless times. Mean, every time I do an album, really, I think Jesus, that was a lot of work. You know, when you you know don't count the hours for God's sakes. 
Um, <laughs> oh, don't but, do that. But you know, so long as the end the end result is something you're proud of, then it hasn't been a waste of time. And I think that's why I've been so unproductive. Yeah. I mean, I've done three albums in a film, so that's not bad. I mean, it's getting better. Yeah, I think but, you, you, but, you um, could you could settle back in your laurels, but I don't think you're that person yet. No, no, I've got I've got really really big plans. You've got things to say still. I think I have. I have. And you now, and I think that's the other thing is it's once you've been down the road. Of, of getting something made you know it's an effort so it's kind of it's either going to be a case of right i know what to do now let's do the next one or it's a case of i know what this involves and frankly i can't be bothered when i started recording albums or trying to um because i had like zero understanding of any i felt it was quite intimidating i did take a back seat and by the third album i'm co-producing with um with nick and yeah um i think i think maybe that will happen with film i don't think it'll happen with kiddo because i really like the idea of it becoming a feature and it still being the same people oh they definitely um oh, well. so I, don't, I don't really go and want to go oh next, when we go to feature i want to have a lot more of a steer on the direction i just don't i want it to be brett's baby because i don't I don't think he's done a feature he must have done but like like a, a big feature that you're going to see yeah, yeah. See something yeah, something that's yeah. going to start. I, th I think that needs to be his his baby, really. Um, but then after that, who knows? Maybe. I'm not sure. Maybe I'll know enough by then. But either well, way. You can only, I think you'll only know by, by taking the plunge. Mm, exactly. I, I had no idea if I was going to be a good director. Um, and I like I like to think that, uh, well, certainly I've, I've got gold Osprey, for God's sake. Come on. Exactly. You didn't tell me about that. <laughs> Must be good. I treated you differently. I didn't. But yeah, again, it's, it, <laughs> I, I, I also tumble to the fact that, what, that there's what you really want to do for me is is the acting, which I, which I love more than anything else. Um, and I think as the years go by, I get more and more invested in the sense that it has to have been worthwhile the amount of effort. Mm. But oh yeah, same here. Something's something's gonna something's gonna yield eventually, which is gonna be just the icing on the cake. Well, I, th I think, and I know if I've, I'm repeating myself with you on this because I've said it to a number of people, but when I see you and uh, Lisa and um, Paddy um, and Lauren together, I feel you feel like already iconic looking um, uh, actors. So I think that um, I'm just excited to see more of you all, really. I'm just trying to figure out how to keep... Um, Lisa in but you know it, it she doesn't it's not you don't see her actually die so I think um you hear the screams but it, it's I think it's still left open-ended so we'll see where we go with that but but yeah I want to see see lots more of all of you and thank you for the music video as well and that was great you're very very welcome that was that was a great <laughs> Sunday afternoon as far as I was concerned yeah it was it was a nice way to spend a Sunday wasn't it but I, yeah, I, I was, keep him I, there were, there were moments when I was thinking, this is silly, and, and, and this is just fantastic. Yeah, um, that's the pyramid in a nutshell. And I'm getting better. <laughs> if this is what your life is like, I want to. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, I think, I think it... Uh... I'm fully aware that this isn't all, what you spend all day, every day. <laughs> this is like the treat day. Yeah, a little bit. Well, I, it's the first music video that I've had made by somebody else, ever. <laughs> okay, right. Everything else has been, been your own... With, with drones and cameras and GoPros and all that kind of stuff. So yeah. it, was nice to, it was nice to have the luxury of people behind the lens and, and proper lighting and all that kind of stuff. And doing yeah, it. It, it did feel like a proper kind yeah. of like concept. Yeah, to see that. But listen, I think we've um, we've talked a lot. I think well, yeah. I, don't, I don't think we've covered half the ground that I think I'd like to. So can we can we like make this like chapter one of, of you and I talking through? Because I want to talk about film more with you. Yeah, the definitely. acting process as well, which was kind of, I thought that's what we would go on, but I, I'm also a big fan of just, you know, following where the wind blows, really. Yeah, where it will. Yeah, exactly. So, but um, bless you very much for your time. It's no, always a pleasure. I'm you. so glad you're part of my life now with with, uh, <laughs> with the creative um, side of me, um, and uh, I can't wait to see what we're going to come up with in the, in the future. But yeah, uh, bless you. Um, bless you back. All right. Well, should we sign off there? Yeah. 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 I'll I'll turn the camera.